have been playing games with shuttlecocks for millennia. In the mid-19th century, the British codified a game they called badminton, in which players hit a shuttlecock back and forth over a net. Made of feathers and cork, the shuttlecock predates the badminton game by thousands of years. Many people are familiar with the widely popular plastic shuttlecocks used for badminton games in backyards everywhere. But serious players use the original feathered shuttlecock. This facility uses duck feathers to build their shuttlecocks. Once delivered, workers start by aligning them with the feather side up and storing them in cups in preparation for the next phase of production. Having the feathers aligned makes it easier for a worker to feed them one by one into a specialized sorting machine. This device has 26 different sensors that measure the parameters of each feather. The feathers must be a specific size and have a precise angle to them. The machine sorts feathers of the same size and angle into different bins. Sometimes the sensors are unable to measure certain feathers and they fall into a separate bin. A worker uses a specially calibrated chart to measure these feathers by hand. The tips of these shuttlecocks are made of cork and synthetic foam covered with white leather. It's time to start assembling the shuttlecocks. Each shuttlecock must have exactly 16 feathers which must be all precisely the same length. The punching machine begins the assembly process. It starts by punching 16 holes in the perimeter of the shuttlecock tip. The worker feeding the feathers into the device must keep pace with the machine, which is producing shuttlecocks at the rate of one per minute. A worker uses flat nose pliers to carefully adjust the angle of each feather. She then places the shuttlecocks inside a miniature wind tunnel to see if they're properly balanced. On some shuttlecocks, each feather might have a slightly different angle to maximize balance. Once the angle of the feathers has been adjusted, they're transferred to a machine engineered to apply a bead of glue around the interior perimeter of the shuttlecock tip. This helps fix the stems of the feathers in place. To further stabilize the feathers, workers place them in a specialized sewing machine that binds them securely together with two rows of thread. The threads stitch each feather to the next, this process strengthens the shuttlecocks, helping them maintain their shape, even when they're getting slammed back and forth over a net. When the machine has finished stitching a shuttlecock, a worker ties off the thread to keep it from unraveling and cuts off the excess. Finally, she evens out the thread rows. With the threads in place, the shuttlecocks must undergo a final tuning. A worker once again adjusts the feathers to ensure proper balance. A machine applies glue to the threads on the shuttlecock, locking them in place to give them the necessary rigidity. The thread is calibrated to quickly absorb glue. A worker applies a green strip, which indicates a slow speed shuttlecock. Medium-speed shuttlecocks get a blue strip, while the fast ones are red. It's time for quality control testing. A machine equipped with a racket-like arm fires the shuttlecocks to a waiting worker. Shuttlecocks can move at speeds as high as 90 meters per second. That's twice as fast as a pitcher can throw a baseball. Once the shuttlecocks have passed the quality control test, a worker inserts 12 at a time into long cardboard tubes, similar to those used to hold tennis balls. With its 16 feathers, 
it's no wonder the shuttlecock is also known as a birdie. These high-quality products are ready to fly.